so we lost our father when I was 19. I was 16. 16 and 13. Younger. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I think we all handled it in different ways. It was awkward going back to school because you got the questions like, oh, how was your summer? And then being like, it was good. Because <laughs> yeah. you don't want to open that can of worms of, I don't want to make this person uncomfortable by laying all this on them right now. Should we just sort of all individually bottled it up <laughs> in very tight packages mm -hmm. and um, went on with our lives and just sort of pretended it didn't happen. And we've learned through, well, I've learned through this experience that it's, you're, you're probably not two people removed from somebody who's experienced uh, some kind of connection to suicide, so it's, um, uh, you're not alone, it's just not no one talks about yeah. it, it kind of handles it. The stigma around suicide yeah. and the embarrassment factor for the survivors left behind is so traumatizing. <laughs> As a kid, you already feel guilty that you, you know, you may have caused the suicide because that's what you think, and then you also feel guilty that you see your, your mom um, stressing financially, stressing financially yeah. about all these different changes, and so that was why it was so important for us to offer this camp um, at as free of charge, you know, so every family can come. Because we wouldn't have been able to go to camp like the, that was the idea. Like we wanted this camp, so we created it. Like mm -hmm. something that we wish we had when we were going through this. Right. It didn't exist. Later. Thirteen years later, where we, uh, where Morgan uh, and Sydney came up with the idea for, uh, for the camp, and I pushed myself in to be included. If for any child mm -hmm. ages eight to seventeen who have lost a loved one to suicide. You can apply right on our website, campkita.org, K-I-T-A.org, and. Um, and again, it's free of charge. <laughs>